Hey guys, and welcome. Today we're going to be doing a video on Bode, and explaining his motivations throughout the Jedi Survivor, and ultimately just detail why he did what he did, and took the path that he did. The title of this video is me trying to be very, very vague and not spoil it for anyone at all, but just know there'll be plenty of story spoilers in this video for the plot and the ending as well, so proceed at your own risk. If you guys want to have a full story and ending explained to you if you've played the game and you're not fully understanding it or haven't brought the game yet and want to relive the story like any of us have, then check out the videos on screen right now. They are being very well received and I think you'll really enjoy them. But leave a like if you have enjoyed today's video. Subscribe if you guys are brand new for loads of lore and story content coming to the channel for pretty much any game that we can do it on. So this is a great place for it. Check the timestamps below, skip to whichever part of the video you'd like to and let's dive in. So let's talk about Bode a little, go into his story a little bit, his background, and just to get everyone up to speed as to where we are and why Bode is the way that he is, just in case you don't know. Bode was a Jedi Knight during the Clone Wars, and was assigned to the Republic Intelligence Operations by the High Council, working with someone called Lank Demvik. However, when the Great Jedi Purge began, Bode had no other choice but to abandon his post and flee to prevent being hunted like the rest. Bode became a mercenary and a freelance gunslinger, doing whatever he could to get by and earn credits. At one point during the Imperial Era, he married and started a family with a woman named Talia, who he settled down with on a planet named Biran, and together they had a daughter named Kata. However, he later lost his wife after the Inquisitors somehow found out about Bode's location after they were hunting the Jedi. Bode's wife sacrificed her life so that he and Kata could escape. After being on the run for so long, Bode reluctantly cut a deal with his ex-colleague Lank Demvik. Demvik found Bode a useful ally and would work with him in exchange for protecting Kata and himself from the Inquisitors by giving him a room in his base of operations. Since then, Bode was working in secret with Demvik, completely behind the Inquisitor's back, and Demvik was putting his life at risk here, because if Vader knew about this, he would be dead immediately. However, one day, he met Cal. Bode found himself becoming a part of Cal's team, and that's where they obviously infiltrated on Coruscant at the beginning of the game, along with a group of other people as well and he would report all of this information, all the data on what was happening, the missions they were doing, all back to Demvik. He would gather intel on Cal and the team the entire time they were together, building a log and always reporting it back when they'd finished, at which Demvik would always send troops in as and when they could, which explains the reason why they were infiltrated and ambushed on Coruscant. Bode's main goal was to keep his daughter safe, and when he learnt of the world of Tanalor, that was too good of an opportunity to pass up on. Okay, so now we have the backstory out of the way and a bit of context as to why Bode is the way that he is. Let's talk about Bode after meeting Cal, why he turned on the Jedi, and why he betrayed the group, and what his overall goals and motivations were. When Cal defeated Dagon, he had a brainwave realizing that Dagon's plan was actually very adoptable, just molded to suit the Jedi in the hidden path as opposed to accommodating the raiders that Dagon was working with. Bode was fine with the idea of it just being them. Bode, Kata, Cal, Seer, Marin, Grease, BD-1 and Cordova, but not the hidden path as well or any of the other mercenaries. If it was just the group there, they could lay low for a while. They didn't have the immediate threat because they're going in such small numbers. Bode was comfortable with that idea, and early on in the game we could see that he was very warm and welcoming to this idea. A place away from the Inquisitors and the Imperial forces, a way out of his current life and his current situation. However, if the Hidden Path were to join us here, and this was to be a huge takeover of Tanalor and a new place of operations for the Jedi, for the Hidden Path, for any of the recruited people that are there that are being hunted by the Imperial forces or the Inquisitors, there's more chance for them to be found. Take the Hidden Path, for example. It's absolutely full of people being hunted by the Empire and the Inquisitors. So if they're on Tanalor, his daughter isn't safe in that environment or is put at more of a risk in that environment and if anyone does come looking for them or even worse Darth Vader and the Inquisitors turn up on Tanalor they did on Jeddah who's going to be there to save them more importantly who's going to be there to save Bode's daughter 
if Bode can't. Bo's decision to betray Cal wasn't one when he was working with Dembic or working with Vader, because obviously Vader's hunting Bo down as well, and why would he need to work with Dembic in that situation? But it was one that was made for himself, and it was made as soon as Cal told Bode of his plan to take the hidden path onto Tanalor. The real reason the Inquisitors shown up on Jeddah was because Bode tipped them off as a Jedi base there, with a Jedi archive, and of course, Vader is going there after what happened in the first game because of the infiltration on his base, it left him with wanting revenge. The Inquisitors want nothing more than to hunt the Jedi to take them down for good, and Bode knew this because he was a Jedi and he's been through it all before. So this was the perfect group to contact and tell them of this Jedi base on Jeddah. After this, of course, Bode managed to get away with the compass and we were able to track him down in the Nova Garan system with a tracker that Cal had given Bode at the beginning of the game. However, it was here that Bode had another great idea. Let's activate this beacon and have Cal speak with Dembic so that he finally knows what's been happening throughout the entirety of the story. And at this point, that is when Denvik will tell Cal of the forces that he sent and the reason why his crew were lost. Not just on Coruscant, but throughout the game. Bode knew that the old Cal would have bitten back and probably killed Denvik there and then in his office, and everyone in the building subsequently. That would have been the perfect chance for Bode to escape that life with no looking back, no worry that Denvik would come looking for him and Kata for that fact, and to close that chapter, a new start on Tanalor. Bode decided at that moment, when he went to read a bedtime story for Kata, which was a complete lie by the way, where he tipped off the Inquisitors and that's where they showed up the next day, allowing him to get away with a compass and go to Tanalor with Kata. Bode of course goes to Tanalor, but he had no clue of the alternative method when aligning the arrays. And he thought the compass was the last shot to do that, as even Cal believed at the time. So as you can imagine, he was very surprised when Cal and Marin turned up on Tanalor. I don't know what Bode expected though when he got here. The place was pretty much uninhabitable from the start, with him just doing all of the work. He'd need a team there to make this place a home, as Kata wasn't strong enough to be able to do anything like that. Look, ultimately, Cal gave Bode a choice. He could stay alive and live here with them and the hidden path, or he could die there and then by Cal. This was the part that made very little sense to me or something that looking back for someone that I cared for, my decision would be completely different. Bode would rather die than look after his own daughter because of an off chance that they could invade. Am I interpreting this wrong here? Like this, the person you're fighting for throughout the entirety of the game, the reason you literally went and betrayed Cal and the team that have given you a home and a place and a purpose for this entire time, you would just abandon them on the off chance that the Inquisitors could find Tanalor? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me as to why Bo did that. It would have made more sense to me that he would have actually showed that he cared about his daughter and stayed with her and stayed with Cal. Look, of course, the reason why all of the likes of Sirk or Dover and things are dead is because of Bo, so that would never be forgotten. But the fact was that Cal and Marin gave Bo the chance so that Kata would never have to grow up without a father figure. Because ultimately, Cal and Marin grew up without a father or a mother figure, so they know exactly how it's like and it's so much harder to become a better person because of that, because you've got to do a lot of learning on your own. Bode should have stayed alive, at the very least here. It is just something that I feel like the story could have been improved upon and could have left a bit of a cliffhanger going into the third game. If Bode is still alive, he needs to try and put it right. He could have made a massive sacrifice in the third game or something like that. I feel like that would have been a better ending. A probably a controversial one, but I think it would have been a better ending because it really shows how much he cares for his daughter. Whereas in this, he's taking the off chance and a risk of trying to kill them, but it's it just didn't work and now he's, he's dead. Do you know? I, it's just one of those things. And now Kata's going to be left growing up without this father figure. And now Cal and Marin are going to have to step in and be that figure for her. So we'll have to wait and see. I think Kata will be a big part of the next game or any DLC that's coming out or whatever it might be. But yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below on that. If that was just me or if you guys felt the same. But ultimately, that is an explanation on Bode, the story, what I liked about Bode's character, what I didn't like about Bode's character. 
And some things that just confuse me a little bit. But let me know your thoughts and opinions down below on Bo. Did you see it coming early on in my Story Explained video? Actually, kind of funny. Literally, the scene before Bo betrayed uh, Cal Cordova and Seer and that, I actually said that I had a bad feeling about uh, Bode, which I thought was really funny and really interesting. So, yeah, I could see it coming from a mile away, but let me know your thoughts and opinions down below if you could see the betrayal coming from Bode as well. But leave a like if you have enjoyed today's video, everyone. Subscribe if you guys are brand new to the channel for plenty more story-based content. We've got quite a few more Star Wars uh, lore videos coming out and explain videos and stuff like that, which I'm excited to do. So if you're excited for those and want to see them, then stick around for them. But without further ado, everyone, we'll see you all next time.